Hi, welcome back. This is Kirsten from JK Fiber Arts, and today we are going to scour my amazing fleece that I got uh, from Greene County Wool in upstate New York. Uh, this is a CVM Rommeldale. It is a lamb, so first shearing, and oh my gosh, it is the finest, most amazing fiber. Uh, this is the cleanest fleece I've ever purchased. Uh, it was uh, coated and heavily skirted and I'm going to open up this bag. She sent it to me vacuum sealed. I opened it already several days ago and was ooing and aahing over it. Uh, and I'm just going to open it up and put it on my uh, drying box. I'm going to try something a little different. I don't have a mic, which is a bummer. I need to get one, uh, but hopefully you'll be able to hear me. If not, I will just have to uh, voice this over later. So I'm going to dump this out. Look at how amazing this is. <laughs> it is so wonderful. And um, most of this lock structure is still intact. Uh, let me bring a, a hunk close to you here. The uh, staple length is about two and a half to three inches. Look at this. <laughs> Look how clean it is too. So I'm just going to give this a, a little shake here and then I'm going to uh, try something I haven't done before uh, because the, uh, you see how fine the crimp is on this, how fine this, and um, the Rommeldale typically has a very uh, low micron, uh, the, the Rommeldale CVM. I don't know what this specific one is, but I think they run between 14 and 24 or 25, something like that. And because I'm gonna comb this into top, I'm going to attempt to keep the tips, which are here, sunny side, and uh, the uh, cut end uh, in order. So I am going to try something that I saw um, from uh, Mary Egbert from Camage Fibers uh, and put this in tool because I don't have the right shaped or sized bin uh, that has holes in it like a colander to fit in my uh, cooler that I use for scouring. So what I'm going to do is just start uh, sorting through this and this should not take too long. Um, I'll just show you what I'm going to do and then I'll finish it off camera. I'm lining up my uh, little uh, cuts here. I'm going to try to keep my uh, locks in uh, order as best I can. And in the process, if I see any big pieces of vegetable matter, I'm just picking them out. And I'm going uh, cut side away from me and tips towards me. Um, one of the things that you can test since we have a nice lock right here. If you have the ability to see your fleece before you purchase it, um, you can do the, the pull test here. I'm pinching on that. That's This is the sunny side out tip. And then here's the lock here. And you just give a little pull. And then also I'm just gonna do a little pull on the tip. These are strong tips. Um, they're not gonna break off. So I, I feel really comfortable uh, just putting these in. And the other thing is if for some reason these don't get clean, don't open up as like I would like, when I comb them, I'll just they'll open up and it'll be fine. So I'm just gonna keep going through this and line it all up. And then uh, I will show you uh, my plan to put it in the packets. So here is my tool and the plan is to, uh, and I, I pre-measured this, um, actually it goes this way. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is make a packet. So this hangs out over the sides just far enough here. So I'm gonna fold the sides in and then I'm gonna fold this over like this and then I'm going to roll the sides up and clip it and stick it in like that. And that should uh, give us what we want. So what I've done here is I've just folded this in half like this and then I'm going to take what I've already laid out here, realizing that I was wasting effort. <laughs> Thankfully, I realized it very rapidly. I'm just gonna put this stuff on top here. And I'm going right out to this edge because I'm just gonna flip this over. And look, see, it's good I did it again. There's a little shortcut there I missed. And I'm gonna lay this along here. And I am gonna stay away from this very edge because we're gonna fold that over. I'm just gonna move all the stuff that I've already done over to this side, like so. What I'm doing here is uh, I'm just going to take this half and fold it over like this. And I'm gonna take these ends together here 
and then I'm going to fold those over and I have some clips and what I'm going to do is just fold this like that with both of them and I'm going to take it up because I want to take as much of this slack out as I can because I want it to be a firm packet you know I don't want it to be loose I don't want because I don't want this stuff to be sliding around inside uh, I, I'm not sure if there's a special clip you're supposed to use for this but I probably don't have it uh, so what I'm gonna do is just put a clip here on the corner like that and one on the side like this and one on this corner here I have two packs here, um, and I ended up doing about half of the fiber. I put the other half away because I'm gonna run out of daylight today. Let's get this scoured. The way I uh, do my scouring, I use a cooler, and uh, I have a, um, a special construction uh, hot water rated hose, and I just hook this up to my work sink, and my work sink will give me 120 degrees at the hot water. And then I will add some uh, boiling water to get it up to the magical temperature. The magical temperature is uh, 185 degrees. You don't want to boil your wool. If you boil your wool, you'll make it weak. And then it will break and nap and all that bad stuff you don't want. So I'm gonna fill this about, uh, maybe uh, a little less than half full with the 120 degree water. And then I will uh, add in some of the uh, boiling water from upstairs that I have put in my pot. Now I'm gonna add water that I boiled. Okay, we're up to temperature here. And uh, what I'm gonna do is add, um, you can see all the steam coming out. Uh, it's one tablespoon. I use Unicorn Power Scatter because what we're doing here is we're melting lanolin. And this is probably three quarters of the way full. This is a 12 gallon. So I'm going to do, there's eight, ten. All right, that's how much I'm putting in. And I'm going to stir this around a little bit. And we're going to drop our fiber in. Okay, so... Oh, look at all that dirt. <laughs> all right. Wow, that is hot even for my gloves. I'm gonna have to get my tongs. Close the lid. Don't wanna let any of that heat out. Candy thermometer here that I use for dyeing that I use to check the temperature. I'm just gonna use it to push this down, actually. <laughs> and we'll see if this whole tool thing even works. All right, and I'm gonna stick this in here just so we can see the temperature. All right, I'm gonna set a timer for 20 minutes and then we'll be back. Well, let's see. I see some, uh, it's been 25 minutes, 23 minutes. I see some uh, locks here that are not in the tool. So let's see how we've done. And this is pretty hot, uh, 185 degrees hot. So let's see if this stayed together enough to work. I'm gonna go put this on my, uh, drying board. I'm going to dig down deep in here and find this one. And it's too hot for me to stick my hand in. There we go. Oh, that one definitely came open. Darn it. I just saw a bunch of fiber go out. <laughs> this quickly, um, so you can see, I didn't actually arrange this other one. This one actually did pretty well. This came out of the other bag. <laughs> so I'm going to put this back in. Um, it looks like it's in good position. I'm just going to do this quickly because I don't want it to cool off and get felt. Here we are after the um, rinse. There's still some dirt in the water. The uh, spin dryer will get out more dirt uh, and, uh, and then we'll lay it out to dry and it should uh, be lovely. We'll see how clumpy it is with the uh, clips on there. We'll see how much noise it makes. Usually once it settles in, it'll be fine and not make a peep. Yeah. Usually we'll find it center. There we go. And it takes about three minutes. All right, let's see what we got here. And uh, let's see how it looks. Looking pretty good. So it turned out actually quite awesome. 
Uh, I do not have anything that I can see that's felted. Uh, I haven't taken the second one out of the spin dryer yet, um, but I can absolutely see what direction the tips are and the uh, locks structure is uh, great. So when I comb it, I will uh, align the fibers and put them all the same direction on the hackle so that when I do comb it, I will have a, a truly worsted prep fiber. Here we are the next day. I ran out of day late last night. I wanted to show you, it's a little bit breezy here, but um, this turned out really nice. Uh, I can. I was easily able to see the uh, tips which I left so I could know what order to comb them in. So I'll have a true comb top. Sorry, I'm putting it back down. It's really breezy today. <laughs> I don't want it to blow away. It's so fine and airy, but it turned out really nice. So I'm gonna um, go in. We're gonna just do a little bit of combing here so I can show you how to do it. And then you will see how gorgeous this uh, CVM Rommeldale fleece is. All of my wonderful CVM uh, Rommeldale is uh, dry now, and I just threw the um, fiber in here, and uh, you can see, here's a good chunk here. Uh, and there is different colors of gray throughout, and I thought about separating it, and then I decided, you know what, I'm just gonna let it all go together. Um, but I, I did not open the tips here, um, and we had discussed that earlier and um, you'll see how it works out just fine. Um, I wanted to be able to identify which end was what, so when I put it on my hackle to comb it, it will uh, all be in the same direction. So, and when I wind up my nest, I have everything going the exact same direction. Uh, so I know that I take my tip out of um, my uh, little um, nests here that I've made and I spin everything the same direction. So that's gonna give me uh, more of a, a truly um, worsted prep fiber. I do have some subtle changes in the gray colors. So this one I think is probably the lightest one that I have. Um, and it just, oh, it's so soft and fluffy. Uh, and this is um, a little bit darker of a gray, if you can see the difference here. Um, so uh, I'm going to, when I spin, I'm just gonna pick them up random and spin them. Whoop, caught that one on the comb. So uh, now I'm gonna show you how to do this. This is my hackle. Uh, this, uh, I know you've seen before, you've seen me use this, I love this hackle. This is from Woolen Woodworks uh, and it is a company uh, in um, uh, Sweden who uh, makes um, their combs and hackles from reclaimed wood. And uh, I hand picked this one and I love it. And I also have a set of wool combs. This is just one of them. Uh, I like to uh, use my hackle to do my uh, comb top prep because I can fit more on. So my nests are a little bit bigger. Uh, and obviously when you comb, you're always gonna have more waste and that's just expected. So it's a, basically, you know, the cost of doing business. Uh, just to, so you know, if you drum card something and do a woolen prep, then you know, you're gonna have very little in the way of waste. Um, so let's get started. Here is uh, the, you can see this is the lock structure here, and I did not open these tips so I can very clearly see which way this goes. And I am just going to uh, put this on my hackle like so. And I don't need to leave a bunch sticking out in the back because I'm trying to have as little waste as possible. And uh, using the uh, tool actually worked out really well. Um, the, the locks uh, did uh, stay all together and um, I did the uh, spin dryer with them in the bag and it worked really great. So what I'm going to do is just fill up, um, not the whole length, because that one all fit on my comb, but I, I usually go from about here to here and fill that up. Um, one note on safety, uh, these are very sharp. Uh, if your tetanus shot is not up to date, uh, I would recommend that you do that before you start working with this. Uh, even whenever I am, you know, really trying to be focused and um, attentive, uh, I have definitely uh, really nailed myself a couple times, <laughs> literally nailed myself. <laughs> uh, in fact, I had one, I don't even know if you can see it still. Here it is. So I got I nicked last week when I was combing some of this and uh, I had to stop and go get a Band-Aid because I was bleeding on my wool. <laughs> But uh, I do have an up-to-date tetanus shot, and I would recommend that because, you know, th these have, you know, they, they even the, the brand new ones, you know, they, they have rust on them, and 
I would not, uh, it, I'd be concerned about tetanus for sure. This is my uh, wool comb, and I have this on the hackle. Anytime you do a uh, comb top uh, by hand, um, you're going to use a wool comb. They come in a pair. Uh, I just have one out today. And what I'm doing is I'm just going to go along here and just start to comb this. And I'm going to transfer what's on the hackle to my comb. And I will come across it here a little bit this way and a little bit this way. And I'm just trying to comb all of this and get it over onto my comb. And I go perpendicular to the uh, combs frequently. And you can see here, it's starting to look like a little, I call it a troll doll on a stick. <laughs> uh, and we're just gonna keep doing that. And then it, we're gonna pass through again. So I'm gonna try to get as much of this off as I can to transfer onto my card, my uh, hand comb here. And sometimes there is a lot of uh, static involved. And uh, I usually just use a little spray bottle, uh, although it's been kind of humid here. I haven't had too much trouble with the static. And what I'll sometimes do too when I start getting down to the end here is um, I'll uh, give this a little, little bit of a hand draft just to try to have as little waste as possible. So all I'm doing now is I'm just doing a little bit of a, a little pre-drafting kind of stuff here. I'm just trying to get all the good fiber as best I can so we can comb it. Because I don't want to waste anything I don't have to waste. You can see that I've gotten a lot more now just by that little bit of uh, drafting that I did. But this is uh, a lot less waste than I usually would see with my freebie fleeces because this is a wonderful, amazing fleece from Green County Wool. I already put my name on the list for next year because it's that good <laughs> at the maximum amount I'm going to get here. And I'll show you the waste and... Uh, And what you see in here is you see all the little neps. And when I pulled apart, see all these little like clumps and shortcuts and stuff? That's all the stuff that we don't want. So it collects all the, the garbage stuff uh, and we get rid of it. So now I have my little troll on a stick here. <laughs> and you'll even see that, you know, some of these, uh, the tips still aren't opened. But don't worry, that's why we go through this twice. And now when you do it, the... Uh, Second time, I'm going to transfer from my hand carter back onto the hackle. You want to go perpendicular to the, the uh, tines. So my hand comb is perpendicular uh, to these tines. So ooh, don't do that. Uh, so I'm going perpendicular this way. You just start by just combing like this. And then I'm going to pull and just slide on through. Now, the big thing about this one is you want to make sure you don't let your wrist roll because <laughs> this is a very full comb, and if you if it slides off the tines, then you're going to be sad because that's going to be a lot of waste. <laughs> um, so, so I will oftentimes do this two-handed. The other thing that I will do is I will um, come through at an, a little bit of an angle. So I'm not exactly straight. I'm a little bit this way just to ensure that it doesn't slide off the um, comb. And I do do the two hand. Ooh, that was a little tight. There we go. Uh, and I do the two hand usually unless it's really, really light combing. Again, I don't want to lose my uh, fiber. So I'm going to keep doing this back and forth and then I'll flip it over and do the other side. And just come from the other side of the comb. And 
And this is also when all the vegetable matter is just gonna fall out while you're combing. Although, honestly, there's very little vegetable matter in this. <laughs> I've had like practically none. Uh, been incredibly beautiful, clean fleece. Keep doing this until it's all transferred over to the hackle. And then we'll dizz it off and uh, make our little nests for spinning. As I'm nearing the end, I uh, do a little, a little drafty thing here too, just because I'm trying to save, uh, again, as much um, fiber as I can, trying to minimize the waste. Okay, I think that's all I'm gonna get from here. Uh, so I'm just gonna pull this off and uh, you'll be able to see all the uh, neps that are in here. Uh, and these are all little shortcuts. See how short they are? There's no, that, that's all garbage for spinning. So I'm going to put this in my discarded pile. And now we will uh, go ahead and diz this off of the hackle. When I diz from the hackle, I uh, use a uh, concave diz. Uh, you want to uh, have the concave side facing the hackle because you want to funnel the fiber into the diz as we pull it off. Uh, the way I do this is I just will uh, give this a little bit of a, a pre-draft here before I start. Again, this is uh, something that I do just to help reduce waste. I'm going to just take a piece from the edge and I, I try to uh, capture all of the, the layers again. Uh, and I'm going to twist this like so. And I am using the convex side of my diz. This is a, a threader that I use for my loom uh, and I just put it through the diz. Any threader that you have will do. And the uh, secret to doing this is you're gonna draft and slide at the same time. So now all of the fiber is going to funnel. Uh, so the fibers that are next door that are capturing, they're gonna just keep funneling in. And I'm drafting and sliding the diz down. And I'm always checking to make sure I get these ones at the bottom too. Okay, I'm gonna show you one more time how to take this off because um, I watched the video back and all you can see is the back of my shirt. Uh, <laughs> So thankfully, this was my very last run. This was the stuff at the bottom and had a little more uh, waste in it, uh, but it should be fine. And I got enough on here that I think I'll get one more really good um, nest out of this. And when I come down to the end here, I'm just gonna start moving uh, back to my left. And we'll just make one more pass down here, or as many passes as it takes to get all this fiber off. One thing I'm doing is uh, making sure that I, uh, I'm gonna just gonna give a little tug here on the bottom so I don't miss any of these under fibers. Just keep on doing this. Actually, this has turned out to be more fiber than I thought it was going to be. This might end up being a pretty big nest. I'll keep drafting on this and then try to get as much as I can in here and get as close to the pin as I can because I think I'm coming up onto my last pass here. And I'm just going to make one more little pre-draft here. I'm trying to hold this as close up to the pins as I can. And when I start getting really close, I will oftentimes just use uh, both hands to, to draft. Uh, you don't have to pull very hard, though. Um, you don't want to pull too hard and, and break it. Well, that's not the end of the world. It would be hard to restart, though, this short. You can hear me. I'm banging right up against those pins to get as much as I possibly can of this good stuff. There we go. 
And then what I do is I'm going to line this up from the other end so that I'm combing them all in the same direction. Uh, and when I spin them, I'm spinning them all in the same direction. That way I'm doing a truly worsted prep and everything stays aligned. And here we go. Let me adjust this here. First, you can see this is the waist that I had after the, the uh, final dizzing. And that, that's from the last pass. And what's left is just all those little uh, neps and shortcuts. And you can see this is the uh, final uh, nest that I have here. It looks very pretty. I can't wait to spin this. It's going to be so fluffy and it's really soft. And I've never spun uh, Rommel Dell CBM before, so I'm really looking forward to it. Next up, we'll be spinning this gorgeousness because I think I'm going to throw it right on the wheel. I know I've been doing a lot of uh, fiber prep stuff lately and art bats, but that's because I'm uh, getting ready for uh, the Tour de Fleece, which starts July 1st. And then um, I'll have a whole bunch of spinning videos for you guys. Hope you enjoy combing your uh, prep fleece into top and uh, we'll get this on the wheel and I will see you next time. Until then, Erlene and I say spin happy.